everybody, and welcome to your quarterfinal match of the StarCityGames.com Columbus Open, brought to you by Ultimate Guard. We are playing modern. Tom Ross, our first seed on Green White Jund, Green White Tron, against Todd Anderson on eighth, eighth seed on Jund. Tom is likely going to be on the play, and here we go. Tom's going to start out Forest and a Chromatic s Sphere. That's not the most explosive draw. Looks like Todd is on a multi five, and he's going to try and even things up here with a Black Cleave Cliffs and a Inquisition of Kozilek. Tom is going to reveal Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger, Oblivion Stone, Chromatic Star, Sylvan Scrying, and a Sanctum of Ugin. So I think that Todd might be incentivized here to take that Sylvan Scrying. Yeah, I would definitely want to go after the Sylvan Scrying, although depending on the exact texture of his hand, I could also see him going after the uh, Oblivion Stone but it looks like he is going to go for that Sylvan Scrying. So Todd will choose Sylvan Scrying out of Tom's hand, past the turn back, who he just found in Ancient Stirrings. That's going to be good for him. So one key thing to note is currently Tom does not have access to any pieces of Tron. So Todd Anderson, while he's on a pretty severe mulligan, he does have a little bit of breathing room here. Right, well, Tom is going to cycle his Chromatic Sphere into a green mana. He's going to play Ancient Stirrings, and it looks like there's a couple pieces of Tron in there. He's going to choose an Ursus Power Plant. Play that land for his turn, and then maybe play another one of his one mana bobble like artifacts, either a Chromatic Star or a Relic of Progenitus. Yeah, and Todd on his turn really wants to follow this up with either a Tarmogoyf or a Dark Confront. Those would be the, the two best cards he could play from this position. There's the Chromatic Star for Tom. Pass the turn back to Todd, who's going to fall to 18 and fire off a Thought Seize. Tom's going to reveal a hand to Ulamog, Oblivion Stone, Sanctum of Ugin, and a Relic of Progenitus, and Todd is going to take that Relic of Progenitus. So that makes me think that, well, there's two good reasons to take the Relic of Progenitus. The most obvious reason is just it helps ensure that Todd Anderson's Tarmogoyfs are able to stay big. The other thing is Tom Ross is a little lacking on uh, land drops, and the Relic Progenitus can cycle to find uh, another land. So Todd's just trying to cut himself, cut Tom off from that ability. Well, Tom is going to cycle his Chromatic Star into a either green or white mana. We don't quite know as of yet. Mm -hmm. But he's likely just going to play another Chromatic Star and a Sanctum of Ugin. You know, one thing that we hadn't mentioned yet about this uh, match is it's a little unfortunate. Tom Ross and Todd Anderson are actually both great friends. And uh, the players' championship r championship race is also something that they're, you know, keenly fighting for. All right. Well, Todd is going to be able to fire off an fire off an Inquisition of Kozilek. That takes the Oblivion Stone out of Tom's hand. So Tom now has Ulamog, Path to Exile, and he just picked up a copy of Ancient Stirrings. Yeah, and we can see here that Todd is has some cards that are pretty successful at one for oneing Tom Ross's uh, draw but Todd hasn't been able to deploy any pressure. So he's uh, trading with Tom, and he's trading with cards that can be a little tricky to trade with, but he's not backing it up with any pressure, and he's not backing it up with any card advantage. Well, Tom's Ancient Stirrings is going to reveal another Chromatic Star, but also an Expedition Map that he might be able to use. No additional Tron piece, though. Yeah, I like going for the Expedition map because it'll find exactly what you need rather than just looking for another random thing. The one thing that's a little bit of a problem is he can't play it and crack it this turn. So if he plays it, he may need to worry about something like Abrupt Decay getting it. And if he doesn't play it, he needs to worry about another discard card getting it. Well, he does sacrifice his Chromatic Star and uh, finds another piece of Tron. So he now has Urza's Tower versus power plant, and with that expedition map on the battlefield in two lands, he can go find an Ursus mine on Todd's end step uh, and have access to nine mana next turn. Yeah, and drawing that Ursus tower is pretty important too, also because it's his land drop for the turn, and it allows him to crack the expedition map if Todd Anderson were going to have something like an abrupt decay. All right, well, Todd has found a copy of Tarmogoyf after knocking on his deck, pass the turn back to Tom, who will crack that expedition map on Todd's end step, go find an versus mine. And again, this is going to give him nine mana. He will be one mana short of casting that Ulamog. But he did find another Chromatic Star that he can filter mana through um, to cast the Path to Exile and get rid of that Tarmogoyf. 
Yeah, and giving Todd Anderson an extra land is peanuts compared to what Tom Ross is going to be doing with his mana. Uh, Path to Exile is a card that I'm sure a lot of people on the cast have, have heard me sort of speak poorly of. I'm not really a big fan of Path to Exile, but when you're going to go so far over the top of your opponent, uh, I think it's a worthwhile uh, sacrifice to make. All right, so it looks like we've just got some word that Rob is up a game over Adam, and Matt Ayers is up a game over Dan Musser. So Dredge and Affinity are both looking to beat up on their Bant Eldrazi opponents. Mm -hmm. And so I think Tom is considering not using the Path to Exile. There's a good chance that he will, because if he doesn't use it now, he's not sure when he's going to get white mana. But if he just hits another land drop, plays the Ulmog, that's going to be able to deal with that Tarmogoyf. And uh, he kind of has a lot of breathing room, so he can be a little more frugal with his removal spells if he would so choose to do so. All right, well, Tom is going to take a little bit of damage uh, and path on Todd's end step. And it looks like he did find a land here, so he can cast Ulamog. Jeez, and this is just a haymaker play. He's going to be able to kill two of Todd's lands. Is not going to be able to cut him completely off of green, but he's definitely going to basically wreck Todd's mana base. And, and Todd is just looking real bad in this game. And he'll be able to go find another Ulamog. And in case Todd was able to find something like a Liliana the Veil, vale, that backup Ulamog is just going to threaten to end things either way. Well, Tom Ross is going to take this game, game one down against Todd Anderson, Green White Tron versus Jund. Let's go ahead and take a look at the player sideboards to see how we think that things might change up as we head into the post board games. On Tom's side, we have three Blessed Alliance, three Nature's Claim, three Warping Whale, two Rest in Peace, two Thrag Tusk, one Ravenous Trap, and one Ghost Quarter. How do we think Tom is going to side? So the two cards that I really like are Thrag Tusk. They're just going to help bridge the gap from Tom's uh, early game to his mid game. And then the other card that you can consider is Warping Whale. It takes care of Dark Confidant, which is one of Todd's ways to hang in the game. And it can also counter cards like Maelstrom Pulse or any of the, the targeted discard. I can agree with all of that. Now on Todd's side, we have three Leyline of the Void, three Anger of the Gods, two Kitchen Finks, one Collective Brutality, one Chandra Torch of Defiance, two Ancient Grudge, one Knight of Souls Betrayal, one Cole Against Command, and one Maelstrom Pulse. How do we think Todd's going to side? So unfortunately, the Fulminator Mages are missing from action, which is where one of the cards Todd would really want. But he does have some options that will be good enough to bring in over some of the cards he has in his main deck. Uh, they're going to be Chandra, just to get a little bit more mid-rangey. Ancient Grudge, good way to deal with uh, a lot of Tom's artifacts. And then also Colagon's Command and Maelstrom Pulse for the same reasons. I can agree with all of that. Now, for those of you that don't know, both Tom Ross and Todd Anderson are stars of the Versus video series mm -hmm. on StarCityGames.com. And you can catch the archives of those on our YouTube channel. So if you're looking for our new Split Second Daily Show, the Versus series, Commander Versus, Magic Online Playtesting, and Best of SCG Live, where you can see Andrew Boswell and myself doing commentary and much more, check it out. Subscribe today at youtube.com slash starcitygames. It is absolutely free. Yeah, you might even catch me and CVM top eating some events also. Got every quite a few of those in the coverage archives. Every now and then. Every now and then. Every now and then. So make sure you check that out again. Absolutely free. YouTube.com slash Star City Games. So it looks like our players are just now finishing up their sideboarding. Let's, uh, let's take a little second and learn a little bit more about one of our competitors here. Got Todd Anderson. He is... He has as many top eights as he does years of age. 30 <laughs> years old from Roanoke, Virginia. 30 open top eights, six wins, three invitational top eights with one invitational win. He is married to Cal Callie Anderson, the first woman to win an open. He is the self-proclaimed best NFL Blitz player ever, and he has the most SCG Tour top eights of all time. And with stats like that, you know, who wouldn't have such a beaming grin like Todd does right there? Absolutely. So again, Todd Anderson, currently 30 open top eights. Yeah, pretty unreal. Yeah, I have 19, and I thought that was impressive, <laughs> but 30 is like yeah. 
above and beyond. Yeah, 30 is pretty unreal. All right. So look, Kevin Jones is up a game over Ben Weinberg. Oh, nice. Taking taking Ben when uh, Kevin Jones is on the draw. Pretty impressive stuff. It's that young pyromancer, I bet. Makes great elemental tokens. Maybe, maybe. So one other card that I think Todd might actually bring in that I hadn't mentioned before is just Kitchen Finks. Uh, Todd wants to have pressure, and Kitchen Finks is something that can survive a uh, Oblivion Stone sweeping the board. Mm -hmm. So that may be one other card that he could bring in. Well, here we start game two. Todd's going to lead off with an Inquisition of Kozilek. Tom Ross has World Breaker, Ancient Stirrings, Urza's Mine, Urza's Power Plant, Chromatic Sphere, uh, Sylvan Scrying, and a Path to Exile. What do you take here? I kind of like taking the uh, the one source of green mana, which is that chromatic star. Uh, depending on the exact hand, if Todd has a uh, a dark confidant that he really wants to have live, he could consider the path to exile. But there's a good chance that Tom just doesn't have access to the colored mana that he needs. But you got a top deck well to win a, a top eight, right. and Tom Ross knows how to do that. With oh, zero with, with zero surprise in our eyes, Tom yeah. Ross draws his one basic forest yeah. right off the top. Ancient Stirrings is going to let him look through. He has a mine and a power plant. He's just looking for a tower. There is not one there, but he can pick up a Karn or just a backup copy of Urza's mine. So the one silver lining for this is... Todd knows that Tom Ross isn't going to do anything really devastating until Tom Ross's fourth turn. So because there's this basic forest in play rather than uh, an Urza land and a chromatic star, Todd can kind of breathe a sigh of relief and know that he's going to get one more turn than maybe he would have expected. All right, Tom is just going to take the chromatic sphere. And I think the main reason Tom's taking this is because he wants access to white mana and it's certainly something that he may, he may need right now. Star Confidant is one of Todd Anderson's ways to actually keep up with the card advantage and power that Tom Ross presents. All right. Todd is just going to play a Swamp and a Dark Confidant and pass the turn. I did just get word that Rob Cucanado on Affinity uh, has beat Adam Franzi on Bantel Drazi, so he will move on to the top four and play the winner of this match. So I would love to know if Todd Anderson actually has access to green mana in his hand. Uh, it's unfortunate that he's losing his Dark Confidant here, but if this is actually fi fixing his mana, uh, that would be uh, pretty pretty nice for Todd. Well, Tom is going to cycle that sphere to Path to Exile. Todd's Dark Confidant. Wow. Todd is just making gonna great use of that extra land from the Path to Exile. Just going to reload here with a Dark Confidant and a Tarmogoyf. He is going to shock, fetch shock himself down to 14. Nope, just 17. All right, and Matt Ayers just won his match over Dan Musser, two games to zero. Dredge is moving on to the top four, playing the winner of Ben Weinberg and Kevin Jones. Both Bantel Drazi decks eh, out of there yeah. nice and quick. Yeah. So this is a little interesting. Tom's not in as comfortable of a position as you would really like to be. Wait, did he draw another Path to Exile? Can't quite see that. But anyway, uh, <laughs> Todd Anderson, he's got a threat and a source of card advantage. So Todd Anderson is going to be able to start pulling away in this game on two axes. Not only uh, is he going to be able to generate more and more resources, but he's also going to start attacking Tom's life total. All right, so Tom is just going to Sylvan Scrying get an Urza's Tower and pass the turn back to Todd. Todd's going to have a Dark Confidant trigger in his upkeep. Yeah, now now Todd's going to get some good redraws, and if he can, or extra draws, I should say, if he can hit a uh, removal, or Thought Seize, he could potentially take the wind out of Tom's, uh, you know, next play. Well, Abrupt Decay is going to knock him down to 15. Tarmogoyf is a 4-5. Dark Confidant is just a 2-1. Oh, uh, and this is exactly what, what Jund wants to do. Tarmogoyf, Dark Confidant, Liliana, these are the cards that Jund wants to have on the table. And when they have them on the table, it's pretty hard for the Tron player to actually deal with this. So we'll see what Tom can do on this upcoming turn. He's going to have a bunch of mana. He needs a powerhouse play. We may see something like Ugin. Ugin would be one of the, the real great all-stars. 
Well, Todd is just going to plus that Liliana, discard a Kitchen Finx himself. Uh, not able to see what Tom got rid of, but that Kitchen Finx will grow the Tarmogoyf to a 5 6. He's going to attack for 7 and bring Tom down to 13. And I like this a lot because this is kind of a bad matchup for Jund, but Todd's really putting up a good fight. It looks like it was an Urza's Mine that got discarded to Liliana. World Breaker is going to take care of one of Todd's lands, and a Lightning Bolt is going to go up top, dropping Todd or Tom down to 10. Wow, and this is getting really close because that Liliana is going to be able to clear the way for that uh, for his creatures to attack. And then I wonder what the life... Oh, wow, and Todd has another Lightning Bolt to clean up that game. Jeez, Todd Anderson, what a Jund master. Never count him out. Todd Anderson is going to even this match up. One game apiece. We are going to go to a third game. Let's take a quick look at the player's sideboards again. We saw Kitchen Finks there for Todd Anderson and Thrag Tusk for Tom when he was using that Ancient Stirrings. Do you think that's still where they want to be or do they potentially want to make some changes? I think they're, they're both the cards that the players want. You can see that uh, Todd Anderson, he really just wants extra pressure and Tom Ross really just wants to stay alive, and sometimes he's gonna need something a little cheaper than a seven or eight mana spell, uh, because Todd Anderson, the Jund deck, isn't known for being aggressive, but it does have Tarmogoyf, it does have Lightning Bolt, it does have situations where it come, can attack your life total very aggressively. Well, it looks like our players are going to take a quick restroom break, and in the meantime, let's talk about Grand Prix Louisville. All right, yeah, let's do it. So we have a Legacy Grand Prix coming up January 6th through the 8th. Hashtag GP Louisville, StarCityGames.com slash GP Louisville for the event page. And you can get this awesome play mat. Yeah, it should be hashtag Legacy is great. But if you register by December 9th, you're going to get the Lotus Petal and the play mat. And there's nothing better than going to a Legacy event and having a play mat with one of the cards that you could potentially be playing in your deck. So register by December 9th to receive this Lotus Petal playmat. That is the Kaladesh Masterpiece Invention Art of Lotus Petal. And you get that Progenitus Grand Prix promo. Yeah, Progenitus, one of the coolest cards uh, in Legacy. I really wish it got a little bit more play. We used to see a lot of those Natural Order decks with Progenitus. And uh, I would love to see some of those come up again. I think it, they're still pretty good. Progenitus is it's very, very good. You can also sign up for that Infinite Challenge three-day back three-day badge for only $100. You get the playmat, the promo, and that infinite challenge badge. Go to starcitygames.com slash Louisville for a full list and schedule for all those challenge events. But there are lots and lots and lots of them. On top of that, there's an ulti ultimate commander package for only 40 bucks. Yeah, and you get the commander versus playmat, the ultimate guard commander, flip and tray, xeno skin, deck case, and then also, uh, you know, the Commander event vouchers, which are very, very fun, too. So again, StarCityGames.com slash GP Louisville for more. On top of that, we also have special guest Rob Alexander. You might have known him for doing the art for a little something called Underground Sea. And Christine Sprinkle is going to be there with some of her awesome cosplay outfits. So make sure you head on out to GP Louisville January 6th through the 8th for more information. That website, again, StarCityGames.com slash GP Louisville for more details. You want to play Legacy? Let's play some Legacy. Hashtag Legacy is awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah. So for this, for this third game, I'm, I'm hoping I see Tom do a little bit more of what he did in game one. And I'm open to see Todd do a little bit more in, of what he did in game two. It's pretty fun when you see both of these decks go head to head when they're actually firing on all cylinders because there's a lot of a lot of fun things that each deck can do. The uh, you know cards like Worm Coil Engine and Karn. A lot of people will say, "Oh, how could you ever beat that?" You know, the Jun player. Like those yeah. cards are just too powerful. But you run into situations where Karn comes down on turn three, and maybe you're on. You know, you've already been able to land two creatures. So Karn kills one creature, but then you get to finish it off with the other one. Or let's say they play a Worm Coil Engine, but you already have a Liliana in play. You can just minus Liliana, Maelstrom pulls both the tokens away, and uh, you know, there's lines of play where you can end up 
having things be pretty even despite the Tron cards being so much more powerful. Not to mention, sometimes you just get to thought seize their Ulamog. Uh, in which case you get to one for one what is supposed to be one of their three for ones. On top of that, sometimes you just have a Dark Confidant run away with the game and just draw six or seven cards. And then you just say, LOL, three for one me like two times and I'm still ahead. So that's a lot of on top of. Yeah, yeah. That said, <laughs> Tom's on the play and he may, he may just play a turn three Karn and exile Todd's only creature and the game just may be over. So we'll see if that happens or not. All right, well, I believe our players are ready for us. So let's head back down to that match. They are going to finish their sideboarding. Why don't we uh, learn a little bit more about Tom Ross while well, these players are finishing up as we head into game three. Tom is 33, lives in Roanoke, Virginia. He has 15 top eights with four wins, four invitational top eights with two wins, back to back, might I add. Mm -hmm. He is the self-proclaimed best GoldenEye 64 player, has beaten people using only his feet. I do hope he's using his own controllers. Along with Michael Majors, he puts 8% of all tournament winnings towards buying an NBA Jam Arcade. You know, I should start doing the same thing mm -hmm. with that, although I want to buy a, uh, a Dance Dance Revolution machine instead of a uh, NBA Jam. And he used to do parkour, but can still do backflips. Yeah, Tom. Tom's just an awesome guy all around. And one of the perks of his Magic career is he is such a good closer. And of all the people that I know who play Magic, he's one of the best people to, if he gets into top eight, to actually close it out. And uh, we've seen also him do this in invitational top eights, which are super, super competitive. The stat of having four invitational top eights and two wins is just an unbelievable stat. And having that theme uh, backed up in the larger sample size of his open top eights, uh, you know, just basically lays down the law that Tom Ross is a force to be reckoned with. He absolutely is, especially when he's wearing that patented Oh, the leather jacket. The leather jacket. Uh-huh. What are you going to do, man? What are you going to do? And if you're a big Tom Ross fan, you have to check out the tokens that Inkland Custom did. She did some of Tom Ross, and he's in his leather jacket holding up a mug. It's this, like, cute kawaii style, and the mug says, world's best boss. <laughs> <laughs> I got one today signed by Tom himself, and uh, I don't know. I'm going to hang it's it just, in my room. And, just your prized possession? Yeah, look at it before I go to bed every night, and... <laughs> Wish I was the boss. Well, step one, get a leather jacket. Mm -hmm. Step two, get one of those SCG shirts. <laughs> yeah. All right, so it looks like our players are getting ready for game three. Decks have been shuffled. Decks have been cut. Let's take a look at our opening hands. Tom Ross is on the play with green-white Tron against Todd Anderson, who is on Jund. The winner of this match is going to go on to our top four and play against Rob Cucanado, who is on Affinity. I also got word that Ben Weinberg and Kevin Jones are going to game three. So I had mentioned before that it was a little unfortunate for Todd Anderson that he doesn't have Fulminator Mages. Another card that you see in most Jund lists that does quite well against Green White Tron is the one mana discard. Todd has four Inquisition of Kozilex and two Thought Seasons in the main, which is pretty standard, pretty stock, but he doesn't have any a one mana discard in his sideboard, which is uh, something that hurts him in this matchup a little more. Uh, it'd be nice if he had like an extra thought seize and maybe a duress. But his sideboard's pretty good, so he's, he's gaining <laughs> percentage points in other places. All right, well, Todd has Mulligan down to six. Let's see if he wants to keep it or not. He does not look very happy, but he will keep it. His scry is going to be on top, and Tom's going to start off with an Urza's Mine and a Chromatic Sphere. Todd will play a Bloodstained Mire and pass the turn back. Tom has another piece of Urza Trod. Let's see what he draws. Oh, it's a Path to Exile. So it looks like Tom is missing the tower. So he needs to find a tower, a Sylvan Scrying, or an Expedition map. And uh, as it stands now, Todd has got to be pretty worried that Tom might be able to find it uh, sooner rather than later. Todd really wants to have a little bit more breathing room to establish a board, maybe get a Dark Confidant or Liliana of the Veil online and start putting Todd a little more ahead on resources. Well, Tom is going to cycle a couple spheres and end the turn with a Chromatic Star and two pieces of Tron on the battlefield, a tower or a mine and a power plant. Pass turn back to Todd. He's going to use his Bloodstained Mire to find a tapped 
stomping ground on Tom's end step. And along with a swap, he's going to play a Tarmogoyf and pass the turn. Tom still has not found that last piece of Tron that he's missing. He's going to start the turn by sacrificing his Chromatic Star for green mana. He does find Ooh. an Ancient Stirrings, which finds him a tower. And Tom is off to the races, ladies and gentlemen. Now he has uh, his whole Tron set up online. His, he just has an explosion of mana. Looks like he's not doing much with it, though. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. He is just going to play that star. He's going to take three damage from Todd and fall down to 17. Todd has another Tarmogoyf, but no land. And with another Tron land, Tom is going to be able to land Ugin, minus two, clean up both of Todd's Tarmogoyfs, and be firmly in the control seat here. Yeah, I think this is a game where Todd almost wishes his uh, one of his Tarmogoyfs would have gotten path to Exiled, but Tom Ross just says, Nuh-uh, Tarmogoyf, get out of here. Yeah, so Ugin is going to come down with the Spirit Dragon. He's going to minus two and exile both of those Tarmogoyfs for Todd Anderson. Todd can play a Scavenging News, but it's just going to die from a plus two off of Ugin. Yeah, this is a situation where Todd is basically on draw Maelstrom Pulse or bust, and he still needs another land. Ugin, once it hits the board, is extremely difficult for Todd to deal with. This is, I think, one of the cards that recently got printed that made this Tron deck a lot better because Ugin can just deal with so much, and it is so hard to kill. Tom is going to filter some mana through his Chromatic Star, draw a card, land a Thrag Tusk, go up to 22, but now he has a an Ugin and a Thrag Tusk on the battlefield. This is going to be really rough for Todd, especially considering he can't even find a third land. Yeah, it looks like he actually has a Maelstrom Pulse. And, you know, if, uh, if this Ugin wasn't in play, Todd could potentially try to run out a creature and have it get pathed. But All right, well, Tom is going to attack with a Thrag Tusk. Todd will bolt it and bring about a token of himself, a 3-3 beast. But Tom does have a Worm Coil Engine here now and a passing of the turn. And, and there's there, a land. There is a land. The bad news is, is even if Todd is able to Maelstrom Pulse this Ugin, Tom has a backup copy in his hand. Oh, no, say it ain't so. I actually hadn't noticed that, and I thought maybe there was some chance of a comeback victory from Ooh. Todd Anderson. Todd has two Maelstrom Pulses, so well, he would be able to handle them both, but the Swarm Coil Engine and uh, yeah, Beast I Token are going to do a number on Todd's life total. He will yeah. fetch Shock himself down to 13. Maelstrom Pulse the Ugin. So this is Todd's way to victory. There's a, you know... It's not going to work out because we have information about Tom's hand, but there would be potential for Todd to maybe claw his way back into this game, but the missed land drops are definitely the, the story of his draw. Yep, and Tom is going to go find a Sanctum of Ugin, cast an Ugin, which will allow him to go get a Nulamog, and Todd's just going to shuffle up and be done, extend the hand. Tom Ross is going to win over Todd Anderson with Jund, or with Green White Tron. So our top four is going to be Tom versus Rob Cucanado. And Tom Ross is just such a baller. I mean, he, he, really just, he just makes the game look easy. He's just so good. He does so much winning. And he just crushes these top eights. It is crazy.